Hello, everyone. Well, women over 40, what kind of symptoms we are all face, doing, facing, right? There's like bloating. I know I had bloating, energy crashes, exhaustion, certain, certain cravings, all these things, right? Well, what should women do for nutrition? That's the topic today. We are going to be talking with Louise. Louise is a certified holistic nutrition consultant who helps mid-age women. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. Thank you for having Louise. me. Yeah, <laughs> I am super excited. So let's just start with basics, right? Um, you know, we, uh, what should we change when we are hitting uh, 40s and above? That's number one. And then the second thing is a lot of women like us, we were just talking about is don't even know what perimenopause is. And suddenly here we are you know, going cuckoo. So what, what is that line of a defense? Okay, well, I'll start with the first question, what should we change? I think the first thing we need to change is our mindset. Uh, for many of us as women, we've had families, we've had uh, careers, and our outlook has been outward facing for most of our lives. We are caring for others, we are raising children, and we are taking care of our communities around us. I think when we hit 40 and we start to feel these inexplicable changes that are body wide, our hormones uh, travel throughout all of our body. We have estrogen receptors pretty much on every organ. So we start feeling these random symptoms. And the first thing that needs to change is that we need to start focusing on ourselves for the first time in our lives even maybe. I used to say, put your own oxygen mask on before helping others. I now say, put your own oxygen mask on because you need to start helping yourself. It's not about everyone else around you. And one of the first steps you can take is starting to deeply nourish and nurture your body with dense nutrition. Another aspect of being a woman is um, the diet industry and the pressure that we come on to uh, come under to look a certain way, to maintain a certain weight. We're kind of grasping for our youth and our to stay as small as possible at midlife. Our mindset also needs to change in that area. Uh, when we hit perimenopausal change and we start feeling the symptoms, our bodies are telling us that they need deep and dense nutrition. Symptoms are just information across the entire body about what our body needs. So we need to start listening in and then responding by balancing blood sugar levels, making sure that we're getting enough minerals on a daily basis. Many of us arrive at midlife with nutritional deficiencies simply because of the diet we've been eating. If we've been skipping breakfast to try and maintain our weight, if we're doing intermittent fasting or we just have a coffee every morning, that caffeine is leaching minerals from the body and your body needs all the nutrition that it can get at midlife. Your second question was, what do you first start noticing? The first hormone to start depleting in our bodies is progesterone. Uh, so that's our chill and relaxed hormone in some respects. We're full of progesterone when we have a pregnancy and we can kind of feel super laid back when we're pregnant and quite chill and quite relaxed. So anxiety, loss of sleep, weight gain around the middle, these are some of the first symptoms um, that we experience. And you can really feel as if you're losing your mind. You're staring at the clock at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, running through your to-do list for the next day, remembering every conversation from the day before and what you should have said and what you didn't say. And it's like, what? what the heck is wrong with me? I used to be spinning all the plates and I just can't do that anymore without feeling extremely stressed. And what's happening there is as our hormones start to deplete, it's easy for cortisol, our stress hormone to dominate. So we're going into this perimenopausal dance, but we start to feel uh, stress a whole lot stronger on our body. And again, we need to focus in on ourselves deeply nourish ourselves, eat three meals a day and make sure we're balancing our blood sugar level. That's an additional stress. Um, and really start thinking about meaningful self-care as well and relaxation. 
All right. I think I think I think we women all over the world do not take care of ourselves. No. And, and <laughs> and so, and, and some parts of the country, uh, world, uh, there is also emotional abuse, which I'm not getting into today. We are only focusing on nourishing, our, yeah. nourishing ourselves, food as well, the first line of defense. One, one word: we're all living under a patriarchy, and there is an element of of rules being opposed upon us as women, just being in that environment. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's just focus on the nutrition part. Now, during these years. Uh, the phase of life is there a particular type of uh, nutrition that women should focus on since the estrogen and progesterone going down uh, what, what are your recommendations so i'll just talk about what happens in a natural menopause in a natural menopause ovaries are finally going to get some rest and so they stop producing our juicy hormones of estrogen and progesterone in our bodies, it's our adrenal glands that pick up the role of drip feeding us estrogen when we're menopausal. So we have our own internal HRT um, and we just get these low levels of estrogen on a steady baseline coming into our bodies. For many of us, when we hit our 40s and our, and our hormones start changing, we're fried. We're so stressed, our adrenals are exhausted um, and the adrenal glands are not able to take up this role of drip feeding us our juicy hormones. That's when we get our stress hormones dominating because there's nothing there. We go off a hormonal cliff at midlife instead of going into a, a, a hormonal change where we feel some turbulence, but we don't just crash and burn. Um, so really the nutrition that we're looking at is reducing, it, it is supporting adrenal health, I would say, as a first thing. And when we think about the foods for adrenal health, it's those real old fashioned foods, the adrenal glands like fat and salt and vitamin C. So they need minerals there. So you're talking about things like bone broth. You're talking about shellfish. You're talking about liver. If you eat foods like that, I recommend that we do at this time of life. We're talking about the really dense nutrition that our grandmas used to eat. So you want leafy green vegetables, the best quality that you can afford. And you're really looking at adding more nutrition to everything that you eat. So if you're eating a salad, for example, you might have gone through life with your lettuce salad and tomato and cucumber. When you hit midlife, instead of thinking about eating less and restricting and dieting, we need to think about eating more. We need to add avocado for a healthy fat. We need to add pumpkin seeds or walnuts for the minerals that they provide. And again, vitamin E in walnuts, which helps to reduce hot flashes. So we're really looking at adding more um, nutrition, dense nutrition into our daily diet. Balancing blood sugar is another important factor. So again, if we've been, I know for myself, I skipped breakfast for years and had a venti skinny latte and I thought I was doing the right thing to maintain my skinniness. Um, when I hit 40, I just fell off a cliff into exhaustion. Um, I needed three solid meals a day to balance my blood sugar level. The body feels stress from every area of our lives. So that's not just what's going on in your lives or in your head. If you have low lying infection, if you are not balancing your blood sugar levels, if you have nutritional deficiencies, the body is going to feel this as stress. So it's really bringing the nutrition in to shore up all of these areas so that your body knows it's not in a famine because you've skipped breakfast, it's it's not on a crazy sugar roller coaster during the day. It is calm. It is relaxed, and it is coping with what is happening. So, what would like uh, talk to us about your uh, you know what do you eat in a single day? Like talk to your breakfast. You said to have three meals, right? Most of yeah. us you skip because you know we have to uh, yeah. <laughs> fit a certain kind of a ro ro role model. 
like, yeah. which is wrong. But that's yeah. so. Talk to us. What should women? Uh, 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 your meal. Um, the most important meal of the day for midlife women is breakfast. When we eat um, a full breakfast, it's it sets us up to stay off that sugar roller coaster. We don't get the energy crashes during the day, like at 2 p.m. when we're suddenly wanting to crave carbs, carbs. We get enough calories during the day, and so our adrenal glands are staying healthy. We're not craving salt or sugar. We're just feeling fully nourished. And then I would say with every meal, make sure you have protein and a healthy fat and plenty of fiber. Fiber is the midlife woman's best friend. It helps us to feel full. It provides us with minerals when we're eating vegetables, we're getting all our antioxidants and our minerals and the things that are often missing from our diet. But it also supports us with our day, what I call the daily detox, which is our poop every day. And when we are opening up the detox pathway, supporting the liver and the bowel with fiber, we are able to um, release excess hormone on a daily basis and keeping we're not getting a buildup of estrogen in our body because estrogen will spike and crash as we pass through perimenopause. And at some times we will be feeling extremely high levels of estrogen. That's your hot flashes. That's feeling bloaty and as if your period's about to start very sluggish. You may have tender breasts. That's excess estrogen in the body. You're probably feeling pretty tearful and emotional as well. Um, in the workplace, <laughs> it's not a good look. And so the more fiber we can include in our diet, we they are then excreting or detoxing or pooping out excess hormone on a daily basis. And our bodies are better able to manage um, the, when we hit the excesses, the spikes of hormone. There's also more specific foods that you can bring in to your um, diet when you start to understand what your symptoms mean. So one of the things I love to teach is, is these are the symptoms of excess estrogen. These are the symptoms of, of deficient estrogen or depleting estrogen. When we have depleting estrogen, we can bring in the phytoestrogens like ground flax, hemp seeds, chickpeas, raspberries. There are numerous foods that actually provide us with gentle and safe estrogen for our bodies when our estrogen starts to deplete. And then when we have excess estrogen, we've got sore breasts, we're weepy, we feel bloated. We can bring in the cruciferous vegetables, your everyday cabbage and broccoli and kale um, contains uh, molecules that help you to detox hormone from your body. So they have the fiber that helps you to poop every day and release excess hormone, but they actually uh, contain um, chemicals that attach to the hormone in the body and make it easy uh, to, it makes it water soluble and more easily released from the body. I think that's amazing. That's amazing the way you described it. Um, there are other controversial topics which we don't have time to talk about. The HRT, you know, the if women should take hormone replacement therapy or not. Maybe for the, for a few of them, it is absolutely needed. But there will always be women who need the support of HRT. But as a first line and as a as a way of um, understanding what's happening to your to your body and being able to make decisions for yourself, supporting, nourishing, and nurturing your body at midlife nutrition is a first line of defense and a wonderful path to take. And what are your thoughts on supplements, herbal supplements we are talking here? Do you, do you support, do you think women should support that with supplements in addition to the food that you just talked about? Because sometimes women are so busy uh, that they cannot have broccoli on a daily basis, as an example, right? So right. supplementing with some kind of protein powder or all kinds of powders out there. What are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, there's a, there's a huge market of supplements for women. Um, I'm a food first person. So I um, 
develop recipes. I have a green smoothie that you make once a week and then you store it in your refrigerator and you drink a glass a day and you know you're getting your cruciferous veg and leafy greens. Um, so I uh, kind of generate recipes that fit into women's lifestyles. The other thing that it's hard to maintain is if you decide to overhaul your nutrition at midlife, are you going to drag your whole family with you? Um, it's easier for you to create recipes for yourself that you keep in the refrigerator and you know you can grab and go to those recipes and you're still supporting your health. I also recommend supplements. Um, and I have a number of supplements that, um, as I said earlier, we are the majority of us, because of the diet that we're eating these days in the modern world, are nutritionally deficient when we arrive at midlife. So supplements are great for shoring up those uh, deficiencies. Magnesium, our relaxation mineral, is great if we're feeling anxious. I recommend fish oil capsules for the omega-3s to bring down inflammation in the body because inflammation is going to make all of your symptoms worse. Um, so I have a number of supplements I recommend. I also recommend the adaptogens, particularly ashwagandha, which helps to reduce stress in the body and calm a woman down at midlife. So yeah, there is always a place for supplements. Um, I am food first because I'm also all about bringing more joy and pleasure into women's lives at midlife. Uh, we've often put everyone else first. Um, I talk about making time for joy snacks every day in your daily life because that's going to boost your serotonin and that's going to boost your health. That's going to help with your hormones at midlife. So, uh, yeah, there's lots we can do uh, to just be feeling more joyful, more happier and just delighted to be alive, even though we're in perimenopause and menopause. I think it's a it's a, it's a time for women to self reflect to do something they always oh, wanted to do. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, you, uh, and, and your responsibility of raising the kids, uh, you know, and putting them through college is are, are going to be finished. So yes, take take the time for yourself. Um, exactly. So, we we yeah. also have clarity at midlife. When estrogen is uh, our caring hormone, we care for others when we, when we are full of estrogen. Uh, when the estrogen veil lifts, we can often see things more clearly and know what we want for ourselves. And emotions come up. We can often feel rage as we pass through perimenopause. And that's, that's perfectly acceptable and okay. It is, a, a, even though we're conditioned as women, that ang being angry is an unhealthy emotion for us or, you know, unacceptable. We need to accept everything that comes with perimenopause. And when we feel rage and anger um, or even sadness, that's an opportunity for us to ask ourselves, what am I going to do about this? What action do I need to take? And what do I want to change? It's a real kind of period of growth for us at midlife. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I think this is such an insightful session um, that you have shared with us. Uh, your uh, Instagram is amazing. And if with your permission, we can share some recipes also that I saw Absolutely. on your website. Um, and yeah. uh, we launching programs. Uh, please feel free to share your website or anything else that you'd like to uh, share here. Um, my website is louisecornutrition.com. There's lots of recipes on there because the recipes are the baby steps to achieving the health that you want at midlife. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Louise Car Nutrition. I also have a private Facebook group because I do talk about some of the more taboo topics of midlife health, um, all about vaginal health and everything we can do to maintain our health in every area of our lives. And my private Facebook group book group is called the nourished midlife woman and then i have a year-long program called menopause you it's all about learning exactly what is happening to your body and then setting up the framework centering yourself to take the baby steps to be feeling a whole lot better at midlife and you'll find that on my website and on my instagram and uh in my facebook group well thank you so much for being with me today 
to uh, everyone else. Keep supporting us. We're coming up with a lot of programs. Our goal is to help women, em empower women, and educate them through these years, the physical and mental and uh, changes that are happening. That it's not just physical bodies and symptoms that we can take care of. We need to also take care of, like Luis um, said, open it up, your mindset. That's important. So yeah. thank you again for being with Thank me. you so much for having me. This has just been a complete pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.